Good morning everybody, Nick from Meat Smoke Fire back from our holly bobs. Um, yeah, we've had a lovely time in Cornwall, uh, two and a half weeks of camping and, and generally cooking and surfing and having a load of fun. So welcome back. Um, so usual story, three cooks. Uh, one of them is already going, two to do, noisy motorbikes, got it all going on. The builders were out the other side earlier um, and the sun has come out, sort of, it's just clouded over. So it'll be a bit stripy today because the pergola is open. Uh, so we've got shade and shadow and shade, not shade and shade, yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, so three no themed cooks today. One we did on holiday. One we bumped into somebody on the way home from holiday. And one I just fancy doing. So we're gonna do that. Anyway, I'll grab the camera. So. We have on camera today, Helena in a sunny t-shirt. Um, so that means we haven't got Andrea with us. So that means Helena isn't on the keyboard, unfortunately. So you might have to uh, answer, answer your own questions. Oh, maybe not, because on the keyboard today, we've got Pickle. So Pickle's my niece, so she's gonna be typing. She might do a bit of typing, so bear with us on that one. And then at the bar, on the bubbles. Good morning. Nana, or mama. So yeah, there you go, welcome. Right, so, sorry about that, I've handed it the wrong way around to Helena. So three cooks today. We are gonna do uh, dirty endusia scallops. So while we're away. Sorry, Karen. What, yeah, fish, ish, yeah, sorry, Karen. Um, while we're away, we picked up some scallop shells. We got had some scallops. We tried um, some, well, no, we didn't try. We've used it loads of time. And I've mentioned him before, uh, Dutchy charcuterie, uh, some of his enduya, which is a, like a Spanish uh, salami-ish. It's a, it's a, it's a cured-ish sausage. Um, you can just take it straight out of the packet and spread it on toast. It's delicious. You don't have to cook it, but we're gonna cook with it. So, um, but yeah, spicy, lovely pork quite fatty not good for you okay little portions yes so we're going to do some of that um, so we're going to do dirty scallops we are going to do over there we'll have to show you what we've got so are you all set up guys well no cancel. Press cancel. let me just check what's going no, on with the IT team we're going to help with yeah uh no cancel that yeah there you're on you're fine what, what about this no you don't need to request to join right uh, yeah, if you request to join, that means we'll patch you in and you'll be on the live cook yourselves. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, you do don't that. need to do that, anyone. You are joined. Uh, we thought we'd do some uh, noodles. So Lexi is a big fan of noodles. She's not had udons, I don't think. Have you? You have? Oh. She thinks she has. So we're going to do some udons. So we're going to do a stir fry, a Japanese style stir fry because it's the Olympics. Um, so there is a bit of a theme. Um, Max Whitlock this morning has qualified for the final of the pommel, which we love because Lexi's brother Sol is in the England team at the moment uh, and may go to the Olympics in a few years' time. So, um, hopefully. And can I just say, can we give a big shout out to Jay, uh, Jake Jarman, who has gone as the Team GB reserve for the gymnastic, male gymnastics team? Bless him, he's not going to be required, but he's been training so, so hard and went out with the team to support them. and. Big up to him, hopefully he'll be there next time. Go Jake. Go Jake, and he's from, he trains with Sol, so we know him very well. So, yeah, so we're gonna do some Japanese stuff. So we've got some onions, some carrots, some spring onions, some mushrooms, just a little stir fry. So we're gonna do a noodle stir fry. Okay, over here, all simple stuff. So um, we were uh, fortunate on the way home from Cornwall, I'd arranged to meet Marcus Borden. So. Um, some of you may be aware of the Country Wood Smoke Forum on Facebook. Uh, it's the biggest barbecue forum in the UK. It covers every style of barbecue. Um, so whatever you've got, they're mentioned on there. Uh, and Marcus runs the UK Barbecue School, so which he's just set, well, he's been doing it for a while, but he's just set up a new location uh, with log cabins and a roof. And, and he has got just about every barbecue going in there, bar big green egg. No big green eggs in there. So uh, anyway, so we popped in and saw Marcus, but while we were there, uh, Simon uh, 
Bert. Bert, I nearly got that wrong, was there. Simon uh, is, if you look him up on Instagram, Lunch and Munchin, um, on Instagram, Simon uh, has set up, you know, in the last couple of years, a burger uh, pop-up. pop-up, and he also makes his own rubs. And we turned up, and he happened to be there on the day of the launch of the Apollo, a Apollo 11 uh, rub, which was, we were there on Monday. And it just seemed fitting that since Jeff Bezos went up to space on Tuesday, that we would do an Apollo 11 rub on a chicken. Um, it's actually called Rooster Booster underneath, which I love. Um, and we thought we'd use the Let's Cue. So we'll just show you what's going on. So I've already put it on so we can have it later on. So what we did is we rubbed this chicken with the Apollo 11, bit of olive oil on it, uh, stuck it on and then put it in the fridge for a good couple of hours. And then we've put it on here. So I've got the Let's Cue on here. We've got it rotating. Uh, we've got the egg set about 180 degrees and we are looking to cook that chicken until it gets up to an internal temperature of 74 degrees. I love cooking chicken this way. It comes out super, super, super moist. And if you want the crispy skin, what you can do is turn up the temperature right at the end, just crisp up the skin, works a treat. So um, love the rotisserie. Um, yeah, so we've got our chicken on there. So we'll, hopefully this should be done and we'll get it off before the end of the cook. There you go. Right, let's go over to these guys and see if they know who's on. Do you know who's on the cook today? Um, so you should be able to see all the names. So who are these? Yeah. We've got Jeanette Harvey. Morning, Jeanette. So you could. There you go. To that, Lexi. Yeah. Um, Andrew Morgan. I can see Alex Lane. Robin Dents. Oops, I've done it. Simon Margerison. Simon's on. Oh, bless you. They're all in. Look. Yeah, morning all. Yeah. Who else we got? Who's that? Blossom one. That's your mum. She's on. See that? We've got Dean Snow, Barbecue Medic, oh, we've got Karen. Loads, loads of people on here. Yeah. So look at that. Lots and lots of people. Yeah. 37 at the moment. So perfect. So if you see any questions come up, just let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Morning, perfect. Robin. Morning. So, Morning, yeah, Big Green Egg in Wales. So if there are any questions, uh, just let us know. But what we'll do is start cracking on with the cooks. Oh, I should say. Thank you to everyone who booked on to the cooking classes. Um, as promised, we launched them via the newsletter. Um, we, we launched those via the newsletter while we're on holiday. We gave the people from last year a week to book before we opened it up to the people who'd signed up to the newsletter, which we said we'd do all along. Uh, and after we then launched it via the newsletter, we sold out in three days. So thank you all very much. We look forward to receiving you all. Um, what we will do is we'll probably be launching more classes in October. Now we've got the Pergola um, and the Fire, the RV73. Um, so once we've got those in place uh, and we know how COVID's gonna play out and its impact on our classes, if there, hopefully there isn't one, then we will launch some more classes. So uh, we'll, and again, we'll do it via the newsletter. So don't wait till I put them on social media because you'll miss them. So. Morning, Ollie Crow. Morning, Darren Turner. Morning, Churchill. Ollie. So Ollie, who manages one of the Hawksmoor sites. Great restaurant. He manages Air Street. So if you've ever been there, a friend of mine manages it. It's stunning. Right, scallops. Morning, Connor. So I promised you dirty scallops. So we have these shells have travelled all the way back from Cornwall. Yeah. So I just asked the fishmonger down in Cornwall, uh, off the hook in Wadebridge. We asked them for some shells. They gave us these, so which is great. Um, these scallops aren't from off the hook because they'd be a bit rancid by now. These are from the Cambridge fishmonger on Cambridge Market. So I've got four, and I asked for large scallops, and these things are big, big chunky scallops. So we've got those. So what we're going to do. I'm just going to cut open our endia and what you'll see, and I'll do it with a spoon, is like this is like a spicy sausage. Remind me to go back and do the taste test. So, I thought you were going to put that on at the end. Yeah, so, that, so this is, I am, but oh. this is like a spicy, um, oh, okay. spicy, like a pasty sausage, like a pate. Okay. It's lovely. Beautiful. Right. So. For the scallops, I'm going to keep it oh, <laughs> spicy. I'm going to keep it really simple. So we've got a little bit of butter going into each shell. 
not too much, just a little scoop. Sorry, regular camera girls on a much deserved break up in York this weekend. So uh, that I think you'll find she's in Lincoln. Oh, sorry, Lincoln. <laughs> So a bit of um, butter in there just to cook them in. You could use a bit of olive oil, but I like a little bit. Of, this is actually Cornish butter. So this is uh, from our holidays. Morning, Mary. So those are going in. Which Mary is that? Pemberton. Morning, Mary. Right, I'm going to clean my hands. Sorry. I haven't put my apron on yet. Right. So keeping it super simple, we're going to get take one of these scallops. Now they've got the... What do you call this? The row? row yeah, the row on the side. I'm leaving that on, so we'll place those on top of that butter. Get those into the shell. Um, I'm not going to put any salt on them. You know, the butter has got salt in. Um, if you used a non-salted butter, then you could add a little bit, but I'm just going to keep them simple like that. And what I'm going to do, if you look at this egg, I need to turn it up a tiny bit. Um, I'm 180, it's a little bit low, so but we'll go with it. It will fire up fairly quickly and we'll get these and they're going straight down onto the coals. So you need to position them so they don't tip over. So I'll wedge them up a bit. Ooh, that one's a bit wobbly, there we go. So if you have got it at lower temperature, it helps. I'm just gonna open it up a tiny bit more and we'll shut that and give that a couple of minutes. Now what's gonna happen? Uh, that butter's going to melt the shell. Um, I was quite surprised when we did it on holiday how quickly the shells heat up. The, the, the heat goes through and quickly the butter will melt and then the scallops will start cooking. So I've read up on the scallops. What you want to achieve is an internal temperature. So if you want to do it by temperature, you want to do it with a thermo pen, then the internal temperature needs to be about 46 degrees centigrade uh, because they're going to continue cooking. Um, so if you're going to do it with this, then go in. What we're going to do is cook them one side. Uh, cook them one side. The butter will bubble. The butter will boil. They'll cook. They will flip them over. And at that point, we're going to add a little dollop of this endia, uh, endusia, uh to each one, and that will just give it a bit of spice, a bit of uh, bit of zing to it. You don't want to add it too early because you'll burn it. So that's why we add it halfway through. So temperature dropped a bit because we had the lid open, but I can already hear. Can you have a look, Helena? Oh, hello, yep. Can you look in? You can already see the butter bubbling on that one. Can you see that? Yep. They, these shells, the heat goes through them so quickly. Now we'll move them around a bit in a minute, so I might need to just get a glove. So we'll just let those go for a couple of minutes. We don't want to overcook them because they'll turn rubbery. Um, rubbery? Rubbery, back to our Japanese. No, you shouldn't do that. All right, I'm gonna grab a drink while you're there. So stay where you are, Helena. Right. Mm. So super, super easy oven glove. Morning, Harold. Yeah, so who have we got? Any questions, guys? Uh, I haven't seen any just yet. Okay. Someone else said they, I can't remember who said they brought some seaweed from France. Um, jump, Lexis jump the gun, jump the gun. I know. Right. Well, we, uh, I don't so think... I probably won't be able to open it now you said that, but we have some seaweed. So we could eat, we could serve these with a little bit of seaweed in the shell. That would work. I'm just going to move them around a little bit. Which is more difficult than you can imagine. Hat, hat, hat. Morning Malloy's. Morning Malloy's, Malloy's Butcher down in uh, Cambridge by the station. Oh my God, their steaks are good. I must get back. I need to talk to you. Um, Morning Corrine. Yeah, I'm just moving them around a bit so they all simmer at the same time. Give them another couple of minute, minute or two. It's not quite as hot as it could have been. Unlike out of practice. Out of practice, absolutely. That one's bang on. That one's bang on. This one, ignoring. Morning, but, Will's Grill Shack. That's morning, Will. Down in South, well, Portsmouth, Southampton, that way. I don't actually know where Will lives. I think he's in, uh, I want to say he's in Rockley, but maybe that's where he works. Right. Scallops are looking to die. 
So I'm just going to have a look at one of these and flip it just to see how we're doing. Yeah, I need a little more on that. Oop. And I need to clean the tongs because I've just touched some charcoal and got it on there. But... Okay, so um, Will's in Southampton. Southampton, uh, there you go. Mark has asked, what's the temperature the scallops are cooking at? 180, it should be. It's a bit low. Don't look at the front because I've just had the lid open. Okay. So it's not... It was about 160 when I got to it earlier, so I've turned it up a bit, it will come up at 180 ish. Our friend 200 is good. Mark Blundell has just joined. Morning, Morning Mark. Mark Blundell. Now, is that Mark Blundell Jr. or Senior? I don't know, it's yeah. Mark Blundell F1. Oh, it's Senior. So, um, Mark Blundell, the ex Formula One racing driver who bought an egg from me. Morning, Mark. Right, I'm going to turn some of these over. I don't want to overcook them. Okay, so some people have joined a little bit late. Yeah, we'll have uh, a recap. Have yes, a look at these, please. Helena. Oh, hello. So I've just flipped them over. That one's doing a bit slower. We'll move it around. That one's doing a bit faster. There we go. So now I'm going to put a little dollop of this in and this will change the colour. So we're going to put about half a teaspoon, a teaspoon in each one. So you just need to repeat what that is. What so this is Enduya. So this is from Dushi Charcuterie, Mark at Dushi Charcuterie, Dutchy Charcuterie. We never have that answer, do we? We've asked Remember. so many times. Um, but it's Italian, Southern Italian spicy style sausage paste. Uh, so you can eat it straight as is. So. Karine's just looked at she's got scallops have just arrived, octopus tentacles and Carlingfords. Any idea what they are? Carlingfords? I don't know. No, I don't know. Are they oysters? Don't know. There we go. Corrine, can you? Yeah, what are, what are Carlingfords, Corrine? Yeah. Oh, thanks Lexi for telling everyone. Scallops, chicken and udon noodles. Yes. Doing a great job. So if you haven't, if you've joined a little bit late, um, We've Andrea, got Lexi, our niece on. Andrea is, uh, having a well-earned break so uh they are oysters thanks corinne uh so um we've got uh lexi and nana doing the comments and it's mrs Meat folk bar doing the camera not as i'm out of practice has to be said right these are going nice and quick now but what you want to do is get into the middle of one of these so we're down at 28 29 you can see the enduja starting to go it will burn around the edges but that's fine these are going to taste Epic. So keep oh, hello. flipping them over. Get a bit of sparks, a bit of flame. Get that enduja in there. Whoop. Turn this one over. There we go. Right, that one is going the fastest, so you can go off to the side. That one's going a bit slower. Another first for Mum. I don't know if she said she hadn't had scallops. But yeah, she hasn't. She never had scallops. So, uh, so seaweed came from the Cambridge fishmonger on the Cambridge market. Um, so yeah, it's uh, two types. I didn't ask what they were, but we've chopped them up a little. They came with lots of salt on, which Lexi loves. Um, we're not actually going to use it with the scallops. This is to go with that dish over there. So we're going to use it later. Hi, Siobhan. How are you? Siobhan Riley? Yes. Wow. Oh, Siobhan the biker. As she well, is she's it. probably not Riley now, I don't... Yeah, Siobhan the biker. Morning. So... Siobhan used to be my HR manager. Whoa, Ooh. hello. Did it get you? <laughs> <laughs> right, see how we're doing. 30. That one's doing faster. That one's doing all right. Three are done, one isn't. So let's get those three off. I will grab a plate. Well, getting, so Siobhan's getting ready for a daughter's wedding. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. I can't think of the daughter's name now. I want to say it's Laura. Yes, I think. That'd be a miracle if I get that right. That's a Helena question. It is Laura. So we hope She's you have standing. a lovely day. Yeah, enjoy. Hope the weather stays dry. 42, 43 on this last one. We'll get Nana to do a taste test on these while they're resting. Oh well, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to waste them. I'm, oh yeah, no, we're all going to eat these. They're only little. 
two minutes. He's not improved with names. I have to apologise, Siobhan. So he's, that's quite well. That's quite well remembered on his part. <laughs> I was never good with names. Oh, what a useless manager I was. Yeah. And I used to have eighty people in my team. Yeah, so someone said actually, perhaps as an alternative to the Enduja, you could dice some chorizo. I think that would work oh, yeah. as well. Right, done. That one's coming out. Ooh, oh, that's mine. Dropped on with panache. So this egg, obviously, we could reuse for something else, but in true style. Look at those, they're all rising up now nicely. 57. I can feel they're soft in the middle. They are delish. Lovely. Right, I'm just going to. Sprinkle on. Should have cut it. I'll just do a rough cut. Thanks for that, Steve. So, for those of you that um, are after Enduya, apparently Little have got some Enduya paste as well. Oh, Waitrose do it in jars. It's not a patch on the stuff that Mark does. Um, well, actually, you can freeze that, can't you? So, I think yeah. we portion it up into smaller pieces. And yeah. Although, I'm, I think I might have some on pizza tonight because. By popular demand, oh. we're having pizza for tea. There you go. It's a favourite for loops. So, scallops with an enduya uh, butter, uh, a little bit of coriander over the top. So we'll let those cool down a second. So dish number one. Let's see how our chicken's doing. It's always round the back when you want to probe it. <laughs> Just, I don't know what the law is on that. This is just the wrong side. You can see the back's over 74 degrees. Helen has now got to use, get used to the new pillars. 62, so we've got a way, 60. We've got a way to go on that, so that might not be ready by the end. But there you go. Still right. got a good... All right, let's go and get them to taste this. Oh yes, we're gonna do the taste test, won't we? So I've got a little bit in here. Okay. So you might have to recap on this, because not yeah. everyone's... So this... Uh, oh, no, no. Brand new rub from Lunch and Munchen. Uh, so it's www.lunchandmunchen.co.uk. Uh, so we, we met... Um, Simon. Simon. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Siobhan. Absolutely rubbish for names. I only met him on Monday and forgot already. Uh, so we met him on Monday. He launched this on Monday. And it's called Apollo 11. And we've got a little bit in there. So everybody, lick your fingers. Fingers in. What does it taste of? Sugar. Sugar? Lemon. Lots of lemon. It's really zingy. Mm. Really zingy. No. I, I think salt, yeah. Salt. Oregano. Yeah. Is there oregano? Yes. Nice. Is it nice loops? Mm -hmm. What's key to this is there isn't paprika in there. It's not a bright red rub like most of them. There's no cayenne, there's no paprika, there's no chili powder. You've cheated, you've been looking. Anyway. Nobody guesses caraway. It is in there. I we know have lots of caraway cakes. Ooh. Oh, okay. Steady on, don't. She's on the on the the vino. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, lovely. Totally different to what you used to. So quite zingy, quite um, fresh. So yeah, really enjoying that. So look mm. up lunch and munching. Hi, Rebecca. Right. So I'm gonna have a bit more of that. Just I think it tastes a bit like lemon sherbet, but no. I've been overruled. No, no. Lexi, what's your no. opinion? Does it taste Definitely like? Not. Definitely not. Okay. Right. I'm, uh, I'm so, swap sides. Yeah, I'm a lefty. I'm a righty. Even. So, this egg currently sitting at 180. We're going to turn it up a tiny bit because we're going to use it um, just opening the bottom up. So, I'm just over two fingers wide at the bottom. We're probably a finger wide at the top. And I want this to be about 180, 200 degrees. Sorry, I couldn't see yeah. that for a minute. So inside, we have uh, the, just the, I'll, I'll grab a pair of uh, gloves and I'll show you. All we've got inside is the wok, um, well, sorry, the expander uh, basket. So it's got the round ring at the bottom that allows you to sit the wok in it. You can buy that separately, it's 40 quid. Um, somebody in the week asked me how could they be, how could they cook at the gasket level? Um, you can just put your standard stainless steel on the top um, and then you are cooking at gasket level. So just buy that. So we're going to get a wok in there. So this is the big green egg wok. 
got a few leaves that have blown in it since. Pop that in there. Now, what we want to do is warm that up. Um, you'll notice it's all black inside uh, because it's been seasoned. Um, I'm not fastidious about, um, some people won't wash them. Um, I wash it, it does go in soapy water, it's fine. I do the same with my cast iron pans. Um, it will be hotter near the bottom. So I think we've covered that when we've done deep fat frying. So I'm just gonna get a bit of ground nut oil in there, let it warm up a little bit. And then we're gonna go in with our ingredients. Now I'm keeping this really simple. I did this during the week with some ginger and some garlic, but for proper Japanese, you shouldn't have that. So we're just gonna go in with some of the tougher to cook ingredients first. So we've got some sliced like. sliced uh, onion. We've got some battened ca carrots. Then we'll go in a few mushrooms and then a few other bits. Um, so the what comes with the zhuzha. bamboo zhuzha spoon <laughs> um, but they do, I mean, they're glued, so they, the, over time they'll break. So I'm going to get metal ones for the cook school. So, right, looking good. We'll get these in. You can get a bit of a sizzle in there. Now, when you're cooking with the wok, you're going to have the lid open uh, a little bit more than you usually would. So set the top and the bottom vent lower than you usually would, because then that will compensate. When you shut it, it will try and Put it out a bit more. So I'm just going to turn these over. We'll let those cook for three or four minutes just to get soft. How are those uh, scallops looking? I don't. Yeah, think... I think we need to get somebody to taste one, don't we? Shall I put one on a plate? Yeah. Let's take. So for those that have just joined, we yeah. have already done some dirty scallops. So I think Nana wanted to try this. So yeah, we've got uh, dirty scallops. So we cook them directly on the charcoal in the shell with a bit of butter with some enduja and then i've just um, sprinkled over the top uh, some coriander you could put some salt and pepper on them but they're going to be salty samphire anyway or... yeah samphire you could put some seaweed in but we're going to use that for something else in a minute don't let me forget but we'll let nana try one of these nana and mm. let's see if they want so you can just cut them you should just cut yeah they're nice and soft you're gonna try a little bit of the white like bit that. loops. It's a bit like it's not dissimilar like from it's yeah. not dissimilar from squid. Oh. Just blow on it, it might be hot. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Really nice. Good. Oh, there you go. That's gonna cost me a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want one of your own? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, here you go, between you. So, one. let's see what Nana thinks. There we go, we'll get you another knife and fork of your own. Mm. Do you like those, Nana? Lovely. So, two people who've never had scallops before, and Alexi doesn't do super spicy food, so it's not too spicy, that's a good Very result. Nice. Right, so I'm going to do. Morning John, welcome. We are just, so as you can see, the uh, you comments, uh, so staff are just having their little appetizer of uh, dirty scallops with enduja and coriander and a little bit of butter. Mm. I think they're going down well. Is Mark Thomason not on to tell me I'm pronouncing the Italian all wrong? No. Is Franco on? You're on Franco, say something. Uh, actually, no, I don't think I've seen Franco yet. Okay. I don't know. Because he had a question for me that he agreed that I'd answer. Okay, on the cook. so Ali, Ali Reeves has recently joined and said, Is that wok in some kind of rack? Yes, so the wok is sitting in the expander basket, which you can buy separately. So it's yes, just on a little rack, and that just sits on your. Uh, on the, uh, firing so yeah it's big green egg what brilliant bit of kit works on the XL and the large too big for any of the other eggs unfortunately they're hoovering this over here nice beautiful do you like the red bit as well oh yeah yeah, yeah? okay I'm nearly eating it all <laughs> yeah me too I've eaten mine's right. gone um, I'm now going to put the mushrooms in because they're going to take a little while to cook down a bit. 
So we'll get those in, get the moisture out of them essentially. Good. I think you can say they went down well. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> Again. Have it again. again. Yeah. Do you know how much they cost, Lexi? They're like a pound fifty each. Wow. wow. Oh, you've got a pound? Mm. Yeah. I'll put fifty. <laughs> got a pound. She every time she comes over, she goes on my chair and goes down the sides to find all the loose change. She didn't do so well, she didn't she didn't get a massive. She only got a pound and a penny today. Not a great day. Not a great haul. Okay. Normally comes away with a fiver. <laughs> Oh, so Sue Stoneman uh, had a go at cooking on the Afia this week. Oh, where was that, Sue? Tell us where you saw the Afia. Where? Oh, let's have a guess. I think we might have to go for a walk for one of those a bit later, Steve. What? So uh, Steve, the barbecue medic, said a scallop is cheaper than an ice cream. Well, there is that. I hadn't thought about... Yeah, but don't mention ice creams. We'll have to buy one of those later. Uh, so, okay, so Ali said when you um, said it sits on the firing, he said he doesn't think he's got one of those. That's the Yes, it is. You've got a fire basket, which is just the ceramic bit in the bottom. And then on top of that, you've got a ring that goes around the outside, the firing. Um, oh. That's the firing. Everybody's got one of those. It comes with the egg. Uh, Do you want to show him that one that's... Yeah, what we've got sitting in here. So... Might have to lift one. Well, it's that piece. That is the firing. So the bit that sits above your charcoal. That bit. So everybody's got one. Some have got three cutouts in them. The new ones don't. So we'll go back over. Oh, she, so, <laughs> so she was in Devon, uh, and she just said, and Luke had many green ceramics too. I'm sorry. Luke had many greens. Oh, so you've been to see Luke Van Dor at High Grange Devon. Lucky you. Um, so yeah, look up Luke at High Grange. Uh, he does feasting nights. Um, he's got big green eggs. He's got the rear wall. He does some live fire cooking classes. So if you're down in Devon, go see them. Right. Uh, thanks for the reminder, Darren. Uh, don't forget the seaweed. Yes, no, the seaweed's coming after this. So okay, yes. we're going in with some peppers now, red, uh, yellow pepper. We're going to go in, this is just uh, broccoli, tender stem broccoli chopped into thirds. So we'll go in with that. So really colourful. And I'm just going to do, this is all going to be vegetarian today. Um, what we could do, I guess, is put the chicken that we cooked over there on the top. Still a dry pan at the moment, so just got that little bit of ground that oil in. We've got no sauce in there yet, but we're going to about to start putting the sauces in because then that'll start to cook it. So things we've got to put in: a bit of oyster sauce, a uh, bit of rice wine vinegar, uh, some dark soy sauce, which will give it that yaki udon colour. Uh, a light soy sauce uh, will be more salty, but will. Um, won't have so much colour. Little bit, and be careful, little bit of toasted sesame oil. Don't go mad with that, and some black pepper. Um, the other thing you could put in, if you can get it, if you know where I put it. Can't see it now. There is somewhere, a little green packet. Oh, I'll put it over there. Why have I put it over there? I don't know. I brought this back from Japan. So oh. this is Japanese pepper. Okay. I should put this, let's put a bit in a bowl. Just um, make sure it doesn't yeah. knock your socks off. No, it's all right. This is a weird one, I like people. So it's, it's a funny pepper. Um, see what you think of this, guys. Put, your, put it on your tiny bit. I didn't get much flavour. Nor did I. It's a bit lemony. Oh, yeah, I get that lemon at the end. Yeah. Right, we're good. Look at this. Look at the colours. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit lemony, hmm. but it also makes your tongue go numb sometimes. That isn't doing it today. It's probably a little bit old. Yeah. Right, oyster sauce. 
couple of tablespoons, a little bit more. Similar amount of rice wine vinegar. Obviously I'm measuring it, my brother's on. No. <laughs> Similar amount of soy sauce. Careful with this because it is dark and it will splash everywhere. And I haven't got my apron on. And about half, maybe a bit less, of sesame oil. Yeah. So Ali's just said he's obviously not adventurous enough with his egg, but everyone starts somewhere just doing some of the basics and then but this Look just that. shows how versatile this can be. Yeah. So have a go with your wok. Um great one to do in your wok is um egg fried rice. Cook your rice, get it nice and uh, then cool it down in the fridge, spread it on the baking tray, cool it down and then cook it for frozen. And we're just going for um, straight to wok, I think they're called, noodles. I'm going to put both packets in because there's four of us to feed. Oh, I'm going to have to talk to you soon and find out how your day at Luke's was. Yeah, I'm sure. He's got such a good setup. Different to us. Luke is uh, used to be the uh, managed borough kitchen, uh, the live kitchen at Borough Market. So Luke's a very good cook, chef. Right. I'm going to give those a minute just to heat through, but that is looking. Let's get rid of some of these. Mm -hmm. How's that look, Lexi? Yeah, and it smells real good. <laughs> Lexi loves the food if you didn't get that. I'd get that already. So I should shut the lid, but... Uh... Right. I'm pretty confident that is all cooked through and looking lovely. Oh, we did. Oh, pretty good on time. Right. Take that off for a sec, grab one of those. Now, we do need to take all of this out. Yeah, because uh, we've got to do the, what have we got to do, Loops? The seaweed. Seaweed. Do you, to, do you want to go and grab the seaweed off the... It's all right, let me put, I'll put some of this in a bowl for presentation, and the rest can go in this bowl for us to eat afterwards. So. It. You can just pop it by the egg. Good girl. Thank oh. you. Oh, look at that. I made a right mess of that plate. One second. <laughs> we'll get you some, Lexi. I know you're hungry. Little voice just said, smells so good. <laughs> Hopefully it will taste as good as it smells, Lexi. Hi, Tim. Hi, Doris. So, there Pad you go. Seven. Yaki udon noodles. We're just, uh, it's a vegetable yaki udon noodles. So we've got some onions in there. So we've got, you, you think you're going to do it while you're on camera? No, I was Helena gonna just this... went for the fork. Oh, she's give got it... a fork. Oh, is she? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought Helena was going to try and multitask. No, no, no. So we've got, uh, we've got um, some onions, some carrots. They went in first. We followed them up with some mushrooms. And then shortly after that, we've got some peppers. We've got some uh, broccoli and then some udons. The sauce is made from oyster sauce, rice wine vinegar, uh, dark soy sauce, some sesame oil, and a bit of black pepper, which I've forgotten to put in. So we'll just do a mini sprinkle on the top because this is Lexi. There you go, okay. my lady. Try that with Nana. Oh, hang on. She might not want spring. Do you want some spring onions over the top? No. <laughs> she doesn't want spring onions over the top. Right, so let me take this out. Uh, Jeanette, yes, I, we will get the recipe on the website. Yeah, this one will go up very shortly. Right, let me just decant this. It might be really hot, Lou. Mmm. Okay. Tasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good girl. Sorry, I'm making a lot of noise. Over right. Just well, cleaning we'll... this pan a little bit, and then I'll be with you. So. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Now you can carry on. Do you like that, Lex? So, Nick's just... I'm oh. just wiping the pan out a little bit and I'll be so, with you. Right, just put a couple of 
us to finish in a bit. It just, it's hot, so don't stand yeah. too close. Just want to wipe it, and then I, and then we're go, going to stir fry the sea, seaweed. Okay. So if you've had crispy seaweed in a Chinese, it's normally not seaweed. It's savoy cabbage. But we thought we'd give it a go with seaweed. So, so family Williams Barnes have just joined. Oh, morning, family Williams Barnes. So we have just done dirty scallops. There were four, two have gone because Andrea, sorry, Lexi and mum have already had one. Nick and I haven't had ours yet. Uh, we have just done some noodles. Udon noodles. Udon noodles. Yeah, udon. Just very simple veg and some noodles with some- We've got some chicken going over here with a polo. Apollo 11 rub on it. So I've been using the meter block, so it will beep at us to tell us when it's ready, but it's always a good idea just to check. Well, that side's done. That's probably beeped at the iPad that's not on at the moment, but um, so that's ready. It's over 74 degrees, so we'll go and take that off. Sorry. So I will grab, while that's heating up, I'm just gonna grab these, grab a bit of oil, this. Uh, so no, we didn't bring the seaweed back from our holiday. Uh, Nick picked it up from our local, yeah, local fish, fish market. Fish market. Uh, We've fish got mongering. a really good fishmonger, the Cambridge fishmonger on Cambridge Market. So we're oh, oh, all lovely. over the patio. All over my patio, lovely. Look at that. So it's really. Is that right. beautiful? So I'm just going to take. I'll take the bit out of it. There we go. Pop that. Pop that in my sink. Those two are hoovering noodles. Is it good, Lex? Very good. Don't get some hoovering, not me. Highly recommend it. <laughs> Right, let's wrap that and rest it for a couple of minutes. And we'll get on the seaweed. Um, if you're using the meter and you are resting it, always stick your meter out through the, the probe end, out through the foil, um, because it will continue to monitor it. Right. Well, Ali, if you do need anything, then DM, send us a DM and we can help you. Yeah, with we can source any of this stuff. So a um, little bit of oil going in. This is going to be really quick. Now this may not work because we've never done it before. Seaweed. Same spoon. So I've just got two types of seaweed in there. A green one and a red one. I should have asked what they were, shouldn't I? Um, they, you can use these by just uh, boiling them and using them a bit like samphire. Um, so if you have not had samphire, try that as well. It's delicious. Um, we're just gonna fling these around a little bit. Yes, yeah, kelp and uh, but just driving the moisture out really to get them to crisp up a little bit. And then we're just going to sprinkle over some brown sugar. Oh, there is some left. Okay, I was just checking. Oh, I was supposed to put that in the noodles. Forgot. Oh, there you go. Oh. Doesn't need it, obviously. No. no. Nice without. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a question for you. Yeah. If you don't have the rotisserie, should you turn your chicken over halfway and would you just do it on the grill or do you need a pan under it? Uh, pan under it? So you that's... don't need to turn it because the egg has heat coming from all around, so I don't bother. Uh, you can either do it on a vertical chicken roaster, which is brilliant. Um, that'd be my preferred way of doing it. Oh, that's looking good. I'm gonna go in with a bit of it like this. Quickly, it'll burn. There we go. All right, I need a plate. Use one of the plates. Here we go. Get this bad boy out. Took my hand off the wok. Um, there we go. Now I washed this because it was quite salty. Um, so I washed the seaweed before I uh, put it in. So make sure you do that. You don't want it too salty. I suppose crispy seaweed could That's be. Good. Mm. Even 
a little bit more brown sugar on it. Oh, you don't like sugar, do you, Lexi? I don't. I've been eating. I know. I watched. <laughs> well, I she thought... been eating the sugar while we've been cooking. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try. Don't a bit tell mummy. Yeah. Yeah, she's not on here. She was. Oh, that's got a seaweedy taste. Now you might not like that, Lex. All right. See what you think. Tastes of the sea. It does taste oh, of the sea. Nice. Oh, nice. another yeah. winner. Right. So let's, I'll take a, uh, just do a quick carpet. Uh, what time at? Do you want uh, to take a photo of this? Yeah, we'll do that. So there's our chicken. Hold on a minute. Uh, so I will, so that's Ripper. just, oh, there's uh, yeah, there some dirty spots. Uh, take that over there. Got the seaweed. I'm so going to put my apron on because I'm about to make a mess. Dirty scallops. Some seaweed. Crispy seaweed. You could soak it to take a bit more of the uh, taste out. I'll put some spring onions on that as well. We've got some udon noodles. No. Yaki udon. Yaki. Some spring onions over the top. Could you also put, maybe put some sesame on if people yeah. haven't got nut allergy. Right. So okay. very quickly for you, um, I'm going to put that bowl under here to catch the juice because this is a juicy chicken. Um, if you are cooking a chicken and you want to do the breast, don't slice it like, or a turkey, don't slice it like that. If you slice it like that, what you're doing is you're cutting across the grain. What you want to do is cut down the backbone like that. I'm just going to take that leg out of the way, yeah, come around this leg. way. Uh, I should take the leg off, but I'm just going to do the breast for now. Yep. And then you can use the carcass just to run your knife underneath it. Simple as that. And you've got the chicken breast. Right, I'll get the rest of it out of the way. Just so you can see what I've done. Really reflections. Yeah, it's difficult to see when it's bright sunshine outside. Um, so. Um, typically what you're doing is cutting across and the grain of this chicken runs like that and what you end up with is long strands of grain in it um, so what we're going to do instead if you keep the skin on um, just cut across it like that the same goes for turkey and I'm not doing it very well this needs to rest a little bit more but can you see now the grain is much shorter it's like when you're cooking a steak you cut across it um, if that makes sense. And what you'll find is it tastes far more moist. So, mm. delicious. Mm. Lemony, lovely. So there you go. And everybody, if you do it right, and you crisp it up at the end, which I didn't do, everybody can get a better skin. Instead of just having that little round bit. So I will try and get this on the top on here let's move these down let's move these off you can just put the scallops on it yeah have some of that that will go there we'll get some some of our chicken oh dropped a bit i'll get the other breast off in a sec that will do that afterwards lexi do you want to try and come and try a bit of chicken I'm just getting Let a me hold it up quality quick. manager to come oh, yeah. and uh, get some chicken. Do you want grab a piece? Might be hot. It's a little chicken. bit warm. You'll be fine. Oh, you got straight in for the skin. Mmm. Mmm. Big mmm. So, today we've cooked yaki udon in the wok. Uh, so, udon noodles with vegetables. We've done a Apollo 11 roast chicken uh, cooked on the Let's Queue. Um, it's so moist cooking on the Let's Q. If anything, it's more moist than the vertical chicken roaster. Uh, we've done some crispy seaweed and some scallops with enduja, enduja uh, and then top in butter, Cornish butter with a little bit of uh, coriander. So not a bad first cook back. We will be back next week. Um, and then the following week we've got classes. So we will, what we're gonna then do is altern, alternate between classes and live cooks, but we may have to shift to a Sunday on one week, um, but we'll let you know about that. Uh, in terms of stock, 
Uh, let's use are in, Thermapens are in. Thermapen are bringing out a new version. Um, I haven't tested it yet, but there's a, th this is the Thermapen Professional. Uh, they're bringing out the Thermapen 1. This reacts in three seconds. The Thermapen reacts in Thermapen 1 in one second. I don't know how fast you really need to be, but anyway, we'll see. Um, big green eggs we can get hold of. Some of the bases are coming back, so the acacia table's coming back into stock and all of those things. So just give us a shout, we can source all of those for you. And we will launch class two. So those people who have been with us before, um, class two will go out this week to the people who had to cancel last year and then will be opened up to anyone else via the newsletter. Um, and we're gonna have one special class two. Um, so, um, yeah, so they're, they're, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. So we're gonna get Nick from uh, Cab Brighton up um, and he's gonna do a pop-up the night before. So people who are coming on that class will come to a pop-up and it should be a bit of a hoot. Uh, so the metal table at the, black, at the back that someone's asked is a blaze. So if you look on the website. These, these things here, they're blaze. Yeah, have a look on my website. They're uh, stainless steel with so really, really <coughs> solid. Each of those doors is like 17 kilos. <coughs> Um, yeah, uh, we're a stockist for, for for Blaze. There's three different ones. There's the Island, there's the 240, which we've got with a sink and the egg, and then there's the 120 in the corner, which is the shorter one, which has just got an egg in our garden. Um, but have a look at Blaze on our website. So everyone's liking to cook someone for something, something for everyone today. Yeah. Right. We're going to go and eat. So have a great week, people. Hopefully, you know, any questions, give me a shout. I'm around all week bar Thursday playing golf on Thursday so just give me a shout. All right people, lovely to be back. See you soon. You've got to press the button bit. <laughs>